Hey, welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. This is part three of over-the-counter pharmacology. Uh, we're going to go over the respiratory and immune uh, over-the-counter medications. Uh, and then after that, we'll go on to uh, neuro and endocrine. So this is part three. So diphenhydramine is brand name Benadryl. And this is a first-generation antihistamine. What first generation means is that something in the second generation has happened to distinguish it from the first. In the book, it talks about antipsychotics, and the first generation has significant extrapyramidal symptoms and somnolence um, associated with some of the drugs, where the second generation antipsychotics don't really cause that extrapyramidal symptoms in the same degree as that first generation, but they have very specific uh, metabolic effects, diabetes, uh, hypercholesterolemia, things like that. The point I want to make is that this is a first generation. It was one of the first ones that came along. Uh, it doesn't mean it's worse. We use it all the time. But because of this side effect of drowsiness, um, we want to recognize that uh, you know we shouldn't be driving uh, with it or something like that. But it's also used in a positive way in the PM, in Tylenol PM, which we'll get to a little bit later. It's an H1 receptor antagonist. And I mentioned the H2 receptor antagonists in the GI section, ranitidine, um, famotidine. And you really want to be careful with the stems. So diphenhydramine doesn't actually have a stem, but on many of the YouTube videos, many of the uh, those guys that kind of create these videos and get you to their website or whatever it is. Uh, they talk about ene as being a stem and that you can recognize antihistamines from it. But uh, if you think about it, that's just a heuristic cognitive bias. A heuristic is a shortcut. And a cognitive bias means that because you've only seen maybe diphenhydramine and loratadine, you think, oh, everything I've seen that ends in ene has always been an antihistamine, so it must be so. But just think about morphine. Well, that ends with ene uh, or INE. Um, and there's many, many drugs. 20% of all drugs actually end with ene. So there is no stem with diphenhydramine. Um, and I'll show you the stem that goes along with loratadine or claritin. Uh, but you really want to be careful with those stems. Uh, make sure that they're coming from a credible source. Um, here in the States, it's the United States Adopted Names Council. Uh, they've got theirs on the American Medical Association website. Uh, if you're in... Uh, the UK, for example, there's the British approved names, uh, and then there's the World Health Organization uh, that has their stem book, uh, and the, those stems are there as well. Uh, but we want to be careful with that. Um, as far as the brand name and remembering it, uh, well, first, the word bed is in there if you take the NA out. Um, so you can think of Benadryl as something that can help you get to bed. Uh, but also, uh, there's the word, there's the beginning of ben, so something like benefit, and then dry, uh, because antihistamines tend to dry up uh, the secretions from uh, allergies and things like that. So uh, Benadryl starts us off with the first generation antihistamine. Uh, then we're going to go to a couple of second generation antihistamines that aren't supposed to cause the sedation. Okay. Um, the first one I put in here, and again, I'm sticking with this if you're in a category or subcategory, I'm going to alphabetize it. So cetirizine comes first, and loratadine will be next uh, for Claritin. So cetirizine is brand name Zyrtec. This is a second generation antihistamine. It is an H1 receptor antagonist. Now be careful, some students get that confused, uh, maybe under the pressure of the exam. Benadryl or diphenhydramine is first generation H1 receptor antagonist. Cetirizine, loratadine, these are second generation antihistamine, but still an H1. So that one and two, uh, sometimes students get the generation uh, versus the receptor uh, mixed up a little bit. Um, the cetirizine, uh, it's spelled T-I-R, but you pronounce it T-E-A-R. So cetirizine, you can think of the tearing from allergy eyes uh, as a way to remember this one. 
uh, loratadine. Uh, this one does have a stem. It's A-T-A-D-I-N-E, and it's brand name Claritin. Uh, the commercials Claritin Clear uh, tend to help students really remember what this one's for, uh, clearing up allergies. But I want to talk about this stem a little bit. So Tadine and Tadine are pronounced the same. Uh, so famotidine and ranitidine, those are both H2 blockers for GI. The TADINE or ATADINE in loratadine uh, has a very similar sound, uh, and those can be mixed up when talking. So it's very important to um, be very clear. And there's this push towards, well, just talking generic names. But just talking in generic names, to me, is like just talking in first names. But if you talk in first and last names, then you clear th something up. Oh, I wanted to talk to Bob. Bob. Well, Bob Smith. Oh, okay. So that gives you a little bit more information. So I know that some of the exams are going towards all generic, but patients talk in brand names. Um, brand names help you remember what the generic is for. And sometimes the easiest way to get to remembering the generic name is through the brand name. Uh, as I mentioned, Claritin uh, like uh, Zyrtec is a second generation antihistamine. It doesn't cause the drowsiness that we see in diphenhydramine. Uh, it's an H1 receptor antagonist. So again, it's for allergies rather than gastric uh, reduction or gastric acid reduction. And again, just uh, remember that it's second generation H1. Um, try not to get it confused. Uh, the antagonist H1 versus uh, generation. Uh, and then I mentioned the adidine stem uh, and then the claritin clear. So one confusion uh, patients tend to have is loratadine versus pseudofedrin. When you have a runny nose, that's something that you would want an antihistamine for. If you have a stuffy nose, that's something that you want a decongestant. That is, it decongests remove the congestion from your nose. Loratadine is the second generation antihistamine I just talked about. The pseudofedrin is the D for decongestant. Now that's just generic for pseudofed, which I'll get to in the next slide. So we've combined a second generation antihistamine, an H1 receptor antagonist, with a sympathomimetic. Well, what does that word mean? Well, the sympathetic nervous system is one that's the fight or flight system. And the mime, M-I-M-E, uh, is to mimic or to do the same thing as. So a sympathomimetic does the same thing as a sympathetic nervous system. And in this case, it's going to decongest because it's, um, that's just how it works. Uh, the stems, uh, we have adidine for loratadine uh, as a second generation in a histamine. And then DRIN, uh, D-R-I-N-E, uh, is actually a stem for uh, the pseudoephedrine, the sympathomimetic. Um, the way to remember, so again, Claritin Clear, that tends to help people uh, remember, okay, clear up my allergies. And then one of my students said, I'm just fed up with nasal congestion. The P-H-E-D in pseudoephedrine uh, is how they remembered uh, the D in Claritin D, and I thought that was pretty good. Uh, pseudoephedrine and pseudoephed. So this is a sympathomimetic, as I said, so it just mimics the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, but that's why you get um, this you know, jitteriness uh, with it, is that it does uh, cause that um, increase in heart rate and things like that. So um, be careful with uh, patients that have uncontrolled hypertension. Uh, decongestant, okay, so that's what it's for. Uh, the stem is DRIN, and I mentioned the fed up with congestion. Now the difference between uh, this Claritin D and Sudafed and then just something like Claritin is that you can't find this over the counter but you'll have to find it behind the counter. Uh, this might be a little strange uh, to someone that is used to seeing things over the counter and this used to be that way uh, but what we've done is because this is a medication that you can make into methamphetamine, an illegal drug, um, it's controlled now, so you have to show some kind of driver's license or something like that. 
and then you're limited to the amount that you can get. Um, phenylephrine or neosinephrine, uh, this is the nasal one. Uh, it also comes in combination with other medications and you'll see it abbreviated PE. Uh, so if something has hyphen D, it means it's the decongestant pseudoephedrine. If something has hyphen PE, it's the phenylephrine. And then we went over the, or we'll go over the DM for dextromethorphan, and then that's the antitussive or anti-cough. And then the PM, which is diphenhydramine, uh, which is uh, to help someone sleep. So uh, like pseudoephedrine, uh, phenylephrine is uh, also a decongestant. Um, but this is a nasal decongestant, so it's a spray, uh, but it can also be found in some liquid cold products. Uh, it has the F and the RIN, uh, so you can see that uh, there's no official stem here, uh, but you can see that there's certainly uh, some similarities uh, in the words. And uh, neo just means new, uh, so you can just think of it as uh, some new decongestant. Uh, we'll go from uh, the phenylephrine to oxymetazolin. Now, oxymetazolin or afrin uh, is a decongestant that, uh, strangely enough, the brand name sounds, I think, a little more like uh, pseudoephedrine, um, but uh, the generic name in no way tells me you know, what it's for. Uh, but oxymetazolin uh, is afrin. Uh, it can cause uh, rebound congestion. Uh, which means that if you use it too many days in a row, and I think the limit is three, uh, then uh, you actually have to, there's a couple of different ways to treat it, but uh, the idea is this is just a very, very short-term uh, solution uh, to some nasal uh, congestion. Uh, you'd be able to use Sudafed uh, on a more uh, chronic basis. So uh, we've just seen two medications that can be used uh, intranasally the oxymetazolin, uh, the afrin, um, and now we get to triamcinolone, brand name Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour. This isn't for an acute or for acute congestion. Uh, this is a medication used prophylactically. That is, we want to prevent uh, these allergy symptoms. So the brand name reads like exactly what it is. It's nasa for the nose, cort. It's a glucocorticoid, which means it's a type of steroid for inflammation. Allergy, it's for uh, allergy. And 24 hours, uh, that's how long it lasts. So a lot of students tend to use this loan as a stem. It's not really a stem. Uh, prednisolone uh, is another medication uh, that can be taken uh, that's a steroid. and Anytime you see similarities at the end, you just want to be careful uh, that you're using uh, something that's an established stem. So I'd be a little bit careful with that one. In prednisolone, the pred, the P-R-E-D, that's the actual stem. And then uh, how do you remember it? Well, I think the brand name makes it quite easy, the nasal plus glucocorticoid, uh, the nasocort. Uh, so it's a, a glucocorticoid for uh, nasal allergies. Coifenesin with dextromethorphan, uh, Robitussin DM. Uh, so this is a combination product, and some students get mucolytic confused with antitussive. So a mucolytic is something that breaks up mucus. So guaifenesin you'll find is Robitussin plain, or you'll find it as Mucinex. Uh, you might recognize it from the, uh, I don't know what his name is, but there's this uh, green kind of blob looking thing uh, that's mis I think it's Mr. Mucus or something like that. Uh, and that's guaifenesin. That breaks up the mucus. The dextromethorphan uh, is meant to stop the cough. So if you break up the mucus uh, and stop the cough, the idea is that uh, we can uh, relieve the patient's symptoms. Uh, this orphan stem, I won't get into it m too much because it is technically a del derivative of morphine. Uh, but it's over the counter. It's so far removed from morphine. There's no addictive potential and, and things like that. 
um, as far as uh, scheduling uh, with a drug enforcement agency. Though dextromethorphan by itself has been abused. Uh, and then to remember it uh, from Robitussin, well, Robitussin robs your cough uh, is one way that a uh, student uh, said that they remembered it. Bacitracin, neomycin, polymyxin B, uh, if I said those three names, you might not uh, recognize it, but if I said neosporin, uh, that might be more familiar, and neosporin's the brand name. So this brings in a, a couple of good points. Uh, if you have uh, certain antibiotics, and uh, they might have serious side effects if you use them um, perenterally, let's say IV or something like that, but if you use them topically, they can be very safe uh, to the patient. Uh, bacitracin, neomycin, uh, polymyxin, uh, if you put it as, take pieces of each word, that's how you get the word neosporin. So neo from neomycin, uh, the sulfate part of neomycin sulfate uh, takes the S, uh, the PO from polymyxin, and then the R, the I, and the N from bacitracin. Um, I want to talk about that mycin stem though. Um, mycin just means that it came from Streptomyces bacteria uh, is how this uh, antibiotic was formed. So mycin doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't put it into a class of drugs. There's erythromycin, that's a macrolide. There's gentamicin, that's an aminoglycoside. Neomycin is also an aminoglycoside. Um, so, uh, Mycin, it might mean that it's an antibiotic, but I really, really uh, would caution as using that as a stem to remember uh, that it's in a particular class. Uh, maybe it's a hint, uh, but I don't think I would use it uh, that way. Uh, butenophen, uh, so that was an antibacterial uh, neosporin. Uh, butenophen is an antifungal, uh, Lotrim and Ultra. And uh, there's another drug, terbinafen, uh, which is uh, also, uh, you can also get this over the counter uh, as a cream and then by prescription as a tablet. Uh, so I didn't find a nafine stem uh, when I looked at the resource, but uh, it seems they're pretty similar. Uh, and then uh, to understand that Lotrimin Ultra might not have the exact same thing as Lotrimin. Um, if it weren't for all the showiness and the colors and all of that stuff, uh, Patients would really benefit from all of the OTC drugs being turned around. Uh, that way you know exactly what the active ingredient is in it uh, and why I put them up here. Uh, Bubutenafin is an antifungal. So we start with an antibacterial, then to an antifungal, uh, and the ne next one I want to go over uh, is an antiviral. So docosinol uh, is an acute antiviral. That is, if you have uh, some kind of cold sore, you can apply this. And I thought, who would ever spend 20 bucks or 25 bucks on this little tube for uh, a virus? And then I thought, well, if I was going to homecoming, and it's the only time I ever get to go to this dance or something like that, then I'd probably pay the money for it. So I always thought of decosinol and going to the ball. So uh, maybe that'll help you remember it. Uh, and then the name Abreva. Uh, to abbreviate uh, the cold sore, how long the cold sore is going to be around, that's what it does. Uh, so hopefully those uh, mnemonics help you a little bit. Uh, so while this one wasn't for acute infection, let's talk about uh, influenza virus vaccine, uh, flu zone. Uh, this is a prophylactic vaccine, so we're uh, giving this medication, uh, hoping to not get the uh, virus in the first place. It's over-the-counter, sort of. Um, a uh, pharmacist in, uh, in Iowa certainly uh, can inject this and um, provide uh, this kind of vaccination, but you can't just find it on the over-the-counter shelf. So uh, maybe without a prescription would be a better description than OTC because it's literally not over-the-counter. Um, it's behind the counter and uh, you have to go through some paperwork uh, to get it. Uh, but uh, you don't need a prescription, uh, and then depending on the child's age, uh, you might might not need a prescription. What I do want to talk about is this brand name, 
uh, and this confusion that some students have between flu and this is why you kind of have to remember you have to know all the brand names all the generic names uh, and I think that's very possible so the book uh, really goes over hey you can learn these 400 you know words 200 brand 200 generic and here's a perfect example of why it's so important to be that literate uh, in the drug names for your patients if you have Tamiflu or flu zone then likely it's for influenza okay but if you have flu flu in a generic name then it probably means that it's got a fluorine atom in it uh, it has nothing to do with the flu so we're talking about something like uh, fluoxetine uh, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressant and that flu is it's just a fluorine atom that just happens to be uh, in the molecule um, there's flu cytosine there's uh, fluconazole which is an antifungal uh, so you really have to know not only the brand and generic but which is which and then this is a great example of where flu comes in and and can be a little bit deceiving